I filmed this preface you're seeing here after I finished the video. Uh, the video will be a little bit more convoluted as usual uh, because yeah software and because yeah uh, Chinese <laughs> uh, original Chinese U blocks <laughs> Neo M8N. So uh, yeah uh, there will be a big disappointing. Um, you'll see. And now the intro. Welcome back. A while ago I featured that Chinese GPS or better GNSS module with a UBLOX Neo M8N module on it. So module on a module in a mailbag card here. <coughs> Sorry, link in the description. Meanwhile I made heavy use of that module in my uh, Making Sense of NMIA 0183 sentences series. Uh, also caught here, link in the description. Now some weeks ago I reviewed this Chinese or probably Chinese FT232RL based USB to serial converter. Uh, also caught, link in the description. And during that review I connected my UBLOX module here and uh, for demo purposes. So now I can connect my UBLOX module uh, directly from a PC. And then remembered that uh, as a command to the <laughs> postback of the UBLOX module here, AndyMouse123 suggested I should have a look at the UBLOX software, which is provided by UBLOX itself for their GPS or GNSS modules. And I didn't do that until now, but thank you very much to AndyMouse123 for pointing that out to me and uh, yeah that's what we will do today. Have a look at the UBLOX U Center and uh, what we can do with that little module. Maybe update its firmware because it came from China with a uh, quite old, the second oldest possible firmware you can get for the new M8N and yeah we'll see what else we can do. Enjoy. Now, before we can use the U-Center software, we have to install it. And please note there is a U-Center and a U-Center 2. The U-Center 2 didn't work for me with that old Neo M8N chip. So we are using U-Center and I have here the version 2109. Okay, and here we are. Let me rearrange the screens a little bit. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit more. Uh, yeah, what's uh, hidden here behind me is just some map information, compass, whatever. Uh, we're not here for that. We're here to connect our device and you select the COM port here. I haven't plugged it in yet, so let's do this right now. Dum, da, da, dum. And we should have a new COM port, exactly COM4. And here you set the baud rate. Auto bouting is also available. I don't know with that, uh, if that works, never uses it. But uh, 9600 is the default baud rate. That's okay. And if it works, you have some uh, green blinking lights here. So COM4, 9600, green blinking. That's good. So next I want to crank up the bout rate. I mean if our ultimate goal is really to flash the software in that thing 9600 bout is not a good idea. So we need for that a message window. That's this symbol here. It also says down here create new message window. And in that message window we find a lot of Enmia stuff. We don't use that now. We use the UBX stuff here. And there we need config. And there in config we need ports. And there we have our target port. It's already UART. You also can 
call the actual settings in your uBlox module via Paul down here. And we want to crank the baud rate up. Now I know, I know that my uBlox module won't play at 9,921,600 bouts. Uh, maybe it's also the USB to serial converter, I don't know. But it will play at 460. 460,800 bouts. So let's set that speed and then you click down here send. And then you notice we are blinking red here because we have to also adjust the new bout rate here in the bout rate settings. And now we are blinking green again. Great. Now that we are connected, we can actually show the text output on the serial port by opening a text window. And that was here, text console. Okay, wonderful. And, and I haven't found a more elegant way yet. <laughs> I cycle now the power. Uh, not not uh, disconnecting USB, but really on the breadboard, I disconnect the power to the GPS module and reconnect it. So we get the boot messages. Okay, and now I pull the uh, the UBS cable. And here we have the boot messages. And I will copy that into a text file and then we have a closer look at that. So, the so-called boot screen. And I will interpret that information here using the uBlox 8, uBlox M8 receiver description including protocol specification document. 300 pages, have fun with it. I uh, put a link into the description. And these are NMIA 0183 text messages. I already carded, I think, and linked to my NMIA series uh, about decoding NMIA messages. The important thing here is only the strings here at the end. That number here is only a checksum. So first we have the name of the company, start message, that's according to spec. Then comes the hardware version, so HWUBX-M80XX0008 and four more zeros, also according to spec. We have a ROM core version of 2.01. Yeah, some more number here identifying the ROM core with a date. That's also according to spec. We are currently running the protocol version 15.00, also according to spec, if you have that old or initial ROM core version. Our default and current GNSS systems we are receiving, GNSS OTP are GPS and Glasnost. That's a default and currently uh, is set GPS and Glasnost. Then antenna config, uh, not very interesting, but that's according to spec. Uh, it's antenna config here, it's antenna super V, and there could be several text flags following. Antenna status is don't know, that's also okay, because we only have a passive antenna, not an active antenna or intelligent antenna connected. Finally, <clears throat> we have the LLC, the low level configuration. Just, that's just a whole lot of bits. And here we have some dark foreshadowing because according to some threads in the support forum of uBlox, uh, an uBlox M8N should have a configuration that has ED and not FF at that position and F9 and not 49 at this position. And that thread was specifically about not being able to flash the firmware of Chinese uBlox M8N modules. Yeah, we'll see. Finally, we have 
RF zero def okay that's really just uh, RF so radio frequency so really our high, high frequency receiver for the GPS signal channel zero okay. Now within the U center there is another way to get some of that information and then some other information. We again need, and you always will need that, the message window here. I just open that up completely. Let's get the Anmia out of the way and go to the UBX. And there we have under Mon Monitor the ver message. And yeah, I can, it automatically pulls it when you are from the receiver when you open the window, but I, you can always click on pull. So here we have the software version again. We already saw that, that's the ROM version and our hardware version and our protocol version. And here is our GPS, SBAS, GLOSNAST, BDS and QZSS. Uh, the European thing is not included here because you need a software update to receive that. And that's what we trial next, huh? So I closed everything again, so we are really clean here. And under tools, you find firmware update. That obviously starts another program here. And first you have to select the firmware image. So you do that over file and I have to go to Sorry, e installation U blocks with a dash. There it is. And that's the firmware file version. Let me put that here. Version for the M8 series, version 301. And very important, there are different firmware files available. You will need the SPG, okay? These letters are important. So we take that and then we take also browse the, no, not that one. Uh, you have to go to the installation folder of uBlocks, uh, of the uCenter, so. Okay, I found it. You have to go to your program folder, uBlocks, uCenter v2109, and then you find here a flash XML and also a flash text. But these should basically contain, yeah, the same information, how things are flashed. So flash XML. So receiver generation uBlocks M8 slash eight firmware file present from the 31st of 2022, whoa, this, this is a brand new firmware. And it already, uh, yeah, took the baud rate we set in the U center and enter safe boot before update. Yeah, we do that. Send training sequence. Yeah, we do that just to be on the safe side. And that's it. And now we should be able, ah, down here, go. Firmware update utility has unexpectedly terminated. Uh, exit code two. Uh, that's because it res <laughs> the safe boot resetted <laughs> our baud rate. Ah, uh, so nine thousand six hundred. That's the default. Don't see a flash. Okay, I'm <clears throat> disconnecting USB. Reconnecting USB. 
and we go to 9600. So that should be safe. That's the default baud rate. So the receiver is obviously still working. Uh, that's good. <laughs> Let's try that again. So tools, firmware update, and yeah, everything is here. And we use 9,600 baud, default baud rate, no experiments. I mean, this will, it's 500K, so that will take a while, go. Firmware update utility has unexpectedly terminated. Exit code two. Ah, let me Google that. <clears throat> okay, it helps if you use the scroll bars. So down here, it's a nice software. You have all the information from the update and yeah, it starts with some stuff and uh, opening the port and the hardware detection and connecting while you are blah, 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 blah. Everything's fine until 3.0 error flash. Dev ID not supported. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so obviously my original Chinese Neo M8N is not quite like an original Ublox Neo 8. Uh, M8N because, yeah, the 8MN contains an updatable flash memory and my module there doesn't. Ah, okay. Since my Max chip disaster card here and link in the description, I'm very careful before I call out one of these honorable Chinese manufacturers uh, to put fake chips or in this case fake modules on their little breakout box. But in this case it's Obvious, okay, it says in the documentation, a Neo M8N contains flash for software updates and whatever that is here on that little Chinese module, which is labeled at least U-Blocks, <coughs> Neo M8N does not contain any flash memory at all, at least not any updatable flash memory. Ah, who knows? Ah, yeah, another little disappointment. I mean, otherwise the module works well, but um, oh, it's it's not it's not for that price. Ah, yeah, you know, um, was almost foreseeable. Ah, sorry, I'm stuttering. Little bit disappointed. Anyway, so for that price. That module does work pretty well. You get GPS coordinates and all, and it understands all the NMIA commands I've tested so far, and it talks also to the uCenter software, but it's stuck on ROM version 2.01 and is not updatable. Yeah. And with that, <laughs> bye.